So thank you everyone. Um, I'm Georgius, I do product for Sigma and I'm gonna talk to you about how bridges can improve L2 composability. Um, so let's look at some numbers about the L2 growth. So at the moment there are more than 20 rollups on top of Ethereum and all uh, the total value locked, which is um, a good proxy for user adoption is like around 6 billion, which is around one fifth of what mainnet is. Um, so that shows like that is going quite well. Um, and two of the most important rollups, like Arbitrum and Optimist, respectively, they have more than 160 dApps on top, right? However, there are some side effects. So all these protocols and dApps are silos across all these rollups. So, so the liquidity is fragmented, and the end user experience across using all these rollups is not so optimal. So it looks like there is a trade off between low fees and high transaction throughput over composability. So what is composability? Uh, it's, yeah, in other words, it's the money Legos. Like it's what fueled the Ethereum growth uh, all these years. And yeah, as we can simply see here is uh, on L1, uh, how a yield aggregator can use a DEX or how um, a lending protocol can use a standing protocol that can build on top, right? And as you can see here, L1 is, yeah, there is composability on L1 and all these optimistic or ZK rollups, different ones, uh, the, there's also composability inside them, but not across them, right? So that's uh, the issue we just described. Um, yeah, so as an example, these are four of the uh, most popular uh, protocols, uh, and we see that they are developed, they are deployed on Ethereum and the rollups, and yeah, at least two of the rollups. Uh, but all these deployments are separate from each other, right? They cannot communicate with each other. They, they, there is no connection between them. Um, so you can see the, the L2 ecosystem is uh, uh, quite huge, uh, quite thriving, uh, with all these kind of apps like DEXs, yield aggregators, uh, NFT marketplace synthetics, but it's fragmented. Um, and here's an example use case from, from a user perspective, right? So a user has uh, some liquidity on Curve, let's say on uh, Arbitrum, and they want to move it to Optimism. To do that, they need at least 13 transactions, like wallet confirmations, and they need to wait uh, seven days uh, for exiting the rollup, and of course they need to pay the exit and the entry fees right on mainnet. Um, what has been the, uh, the role of the bridges so far? Um, apart from the canonical bridges, there are at least 10 bridges for uh, roll-up hopping or this uh, kind of um, So we solved two of the problems, so you don't have to wait seven days anymore, and you don't have to pay the enter and exit fees, but all these 13 separate transactions still exist. Right. Uh, so what we propose is you know, that the bridges should move uh, away from uh, just this ERC-20 token bridging and uh, focus more on message passing, right? So how do you pass messages from uh, an L2 to another L2 or to L1? And yeah, the end game of that is, yeah, you can call them the cross rollup money Legos, right? So it's, this is the same um, diagram we saw before, but now you can basically use uh, a, a DEX on L1 um, to communicate with uh, derivatives protocol on an L2, right? And and all these kind of um, synergies over there. Um, so yeah, the, the benefits of this cross rollup composability from, uh, for the end user would be that they don't uh, have to manually uh, bridge anymore um, for any kind of cross rollup transaction like uh, a token swap or moving the liquidity or any kind of govern uh, governance uh, actions like voting or uh, market making um, or money market transactions like lending or borrowing, don't, not having to move the collateral, um, or NFT marketplaces, they can market the, market, the, the NFTs wherever they want, in wherever N, uh, L2 they want. So how this could look like, um, so this is uh, yeah, our proposal, like a, a cross roll-up composability layer, and you can see on top is one, uh, imagine like one roll-up on top and another roll-up uh, below. And in the middle is the relay, so it's basically off-chain uh, relay network. And the main uh, concept here is that you have uh, generic message passing 
smart contracts developed on both, uh, deployed on both uh, rollups, and you have the so-called adapter contract, which will prepare and parse uh, the necessary messages, right? So this, uh, this setup will uh, help um, any smart contracts from, uh, from one op from one rollup to communicate with another rollup or even with uh, layer one. Yeah, so that was basically it. Lightning talk. Yeah, uh, we can have some question. I don't know how much we have time one, we have. Just one question? Yeah, yeah. in case there is a question. How does the relayer maintain uh, L1 level of security, like you mentioned? I didn't mention that it maintains L1 security, but yeah, there are se several kind of setups, right? So you can you can have a fully trusted setup. Uh, you can have a trust minimized setup with um, you know kind of optimistic model uh, or a zk model. So yeah, I mean if you're if we're talking for this specific uh, proposal we're doing, uh, you know we, we're starting with a kind of controlled setup and we are exploring um, uh, like uh, optimistically, you know. Uh, Putting the state back on L1 or you know using zk, so this is something this still work in progress. Thank you so much. Big round of applause for Yorgos and Sigma.